Good morning and welcome to another video. So on Sunday, the 17th of July, it is going to be Lancaster GP, which is the fourth round of the national series. Um, and I'm riding it. So this weekend, I'm gonna go and ride the course and I'll take you along with me. And I thought I'd make it into a bit of like a preview show. And um, we can look at who's riding, what the course is like, and maybe make some predictions. I love the Pacer McKelvin podcast where he like previews all the Lifetime Grand Prix races and he rides them as well. So I feel like it's kind of, I'm going for that kind of vibe. Obviously it's a bit weird, like these are the people I'm racing against. Like, so I don't want to give too much away, but we'll see. Let's go. Right, so I've just parked up. Just uh, I've driven to Garstang because it's just a few miles south of um, Lancaster and I didn't want to drive all the way up to Lancaster and I wanted to do a bit of a ride anyway, so I thought... Park in Garstang, ride up to Lancaster, ride the route and then ride back. But <laughs> it's a bit weird because there's, well, there's nowhere to park. There's loads of places to park, but I'm just parked outside someone's house. I'm a bit worried they're going to be like, what are you doing here? But there's no yellow lines, so I'm sure it'll be fine. Or there's an old man watching me. That's a bit weird. Okay, I'm going to go. Bye. So I was just finished doing my threshold efforts up the Jubilee Tower climb. It's a great climb because it's just quite steady at like seven, six, seven percent So now I'm going to head off and ride to the Lancaster course. But first, I need to enjoy this view. Look at that. You see all the way to the Lake District. I don't know if it will show up as well on here. But it's amazing. So I'm just at the corner of where like the lap board will be. Um, and I'm just going to go do a lap. I'm going to do like with power over... Well, <laughs> I'm setting myself up for Savannah here. But I'm saying that I'm going to do it with power overlay and all the stats and stuff so you can get a real idea of the course. Um, that corner, I don't think you'll see it because what I'll do is when I get to this corner, I'll go straight on and show you the finish. But the corner is quite a rough r surface and it'll be really fast coming into that corner. So um, that'll be interesting. But yeah, so this is the start of the lap. Let's go. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've had a haircut. So that will save me a good 20 odd grams for the race on Sunday. And God knows I'm going to need it. It is one hilly course. So <clears throat> this is the start of um, the course. It's where we join the course for the laps. Um, the race is six laps, I believe. Um, each lap is 14.8 kilometers um, and each lap has 900 feet of elevation. So it is going to be a big day out. I did a, uh, did a ride the other day actually that had 6,000 feet of climbing and God, it almost killed me. <laughs> but it'll be easier in a race. That's what I keep telling myself anyway. So coming down here, um, you can see I did actually manage to get the stats on the on the screen, so that's good. Um, it's kind of flat along here. This is the first um, first flat of the course. Um, it's pretty fast. Um, you can see in the top right hand corner that's the map of the course. So we're just coming in to the first corner. Um, it's a pretty tight right hander. Uh, it's it's okay. The road surface on all the corners is fine, so they can all be taken at speed apart from the final corner where you kind of go back onto the lap there it's a bit bit gravelly but otherwise it is fine so you can't this corner and positioning on this corner i think is going to be key because as soon as you come out of this corner oh look at me stopping <laughs> i'm trying to be a good citizen there and uh, let the car go first but he let me go um, and you start climbing so there's two major climbs on this course this is the first one so you hit it pretty quickly um I'll edit in what the percentage is, but you can see as you start climbing, the gradient starts ramping up pretty quickly. Um, and my power starts going up as I'm starting to try and get out this course. The reason I put all the power data and the gradient and stuff on there was just so that you can get a bit of an idea of the steepness. Like Otherwise, it's kind of hard to tell um, just from looking at a video. Um, so at this point, it's saying 17, 17%. Gosh, um, and I'm doing like 15 kilometers now, doing 200 watts, which is about just under four watts per kilogram, just to do that. <laughs> so it will be fun. Anyway, so um, I'll just continue. You can have a look at me climbing. I try. I was trying not to get out the saddle so that it wouldn't be too wibbly wobbly for you guys, um, but there's a limit. <laughs> uh, so I think a big factor in this race is going to be the heat acclimatization. Well, just the heat in general. There's a yellow weather warning for heat. Um, but our race does start at nine. So hopefully it shouldn't be too bad. Um, 
it says 16 degrees when we start at nine and when we finish at midday, it's gonna be 22. So I think the men are gonna have it a lot harder because in the afternoon it gets up to 26. But we are in Lancaster, we are up north. So <laughs> there's a limit of how bad it's gonna be. On the ride when I was doing it, it was pretty hot, but it's fine because you're either going up or down. So you get quite a lot of wind um, cooling effect. In terms of heat acclimatization, I was thinking of doing some. Um, I've kind of looked into the ways that you can do it without like going to a hot country. And there is like tips about after trade session, getting into a hot bath and like sitting there as long as you can, things like using saunas. Um, but to be honest with you, by the time I thought of it, it was too late. <laughs> Although you do apparently get benefits pretty quickly. But anyway, so even with me prattling on about heat acclimatization, we're still climbing. <laughs> um, as I say, this climb is a bit draggy. It's not super steep. There's that steep bit at the beginning, but the percentage, the gradient isn't too bad. Um, I think the gradient is a bit off here because it says 34%, which is not right. <laughs> I would say probably here it's about seven, eight percent. I'll get the velo viewer for the climb up um, just to show you. Um, in terms of the course in general, I think it's going to be a tough course because it's like Rydale, but the climbs are longer. So I think that's going to make it a bit tougher. Um, especially for someone like me, because I can get over the climbs because I can sp sprint over them. But, um, especially like in Rydale, and then you can kind of catch back on. But in this one, they are prolonged climbs, so I think someone like a pure climber is going to do really well. So, we are coming towards the top of the climb now. Um, also, I think along this straight is where the feed zone is. I was going to say where it was, um but I'm pretty sure it's along this climb that the feed zone um, starts and the litter zone starts. Um, so it flattens off a bit here um, and I will skip forward to the next interesting bit. So this bit I'm fast forwarding is kind of a bit it's false flatty, it's rolling. When you're in a peloton, you're not even gonna notice it. There's nothing really technical there. It's all pretty good. But that is about to change. So um, here we're coming up to, you can see kind of like an enclosed tree area. This is a fast descent. Um, the road surface is very poor. And because you're going into under trees, even with like photochromatic lenses, which I have, you're going into it not being able to see a lot and with the light changing it's not not great and it's it's that kind of road surface where it's just a bit broken there's no huge potholes um but it's just a bit like cracked surface um so i think there's going to be a lot of nervous riders in this section then you start picking up speed and you get to a very very tight right hander here you go so you see here and I think with a road closure it wouldn't be too bad but you can see that is the tight point of the course and it is a good kind of like 150 degree corner you are almost coming back on yourself and I think there would be a very good moment to try and break the race up because you do start climbing again pretty soon or maybe I'm wrong about that no it looks like it stays pr pretty flat but depending on what the wind direction is like for that day um if someone was to kick out of there and if it was already strung out, you could get quite a big gap. Um, you know me, I love a corner. I'd love to do a bit of a sprint out there, but I probably won't be that close to the front after all those hills. You never know. So again, we've got some nice little rolling, um, rolling terrain here. And I think pretty much along this whole straight, it's pretty rolling. Um, so you can see in the map in the top right hand corner, uh, the little green dot is me. Um, and I'm going along and it's all pretty rolling. So it's difficult because I'm not quite sure how this is gonna, gonna ride. On my own, there wasn't a lot of respite on the course, like you're either going up or going down. But I think in a peloton, you do have some straights where you can kind of recover and depending on how big the groups are, how split up it's got, um, will depend on how hard the day is. I mean, it's gonna be a tough day out, but um, it will depend.
that way. Easy ride for anyone, even if you're sat at the back of the peloton. Um, so I think this will be the ideal place to try and eat and drink because the road is pretty straight. Um, it's pretty flat. You're not going to be getting out of the saddle. Um, so yeah, this is definitely the place to do that. So this is a little little kicker of a climb. Um, it's not really a big climb in the scheme of the race. Um, but it's a bit, you know, it's, it's significant. As I said, the um, gradient is a little bit off, but um, when it's a 10% there, I think that probably is about right. Um, and you kind of come to this um, cross, cross junction, cross, I wouldn't say T-junction, but it's not a T-junction because it's got another side. You got what well, junction? You come to a junction, um, which is obviously a bit more of a pain when you're not in a race because you have to stop. But otherwise, this is pretty fine. Um, and yet, you're still going along this back end of the course. It's all pretty stable. Stable, settled. Now this is a point of interest, not for the race, but there was just this woman <laughs> lying in the road. And I just would like to point out that I did turn around, you can see I slowed down, and I did turn around and ask if they needed a hand or anything. Um, I didn't just ride past. Um, but when I went round and did another loop after filming this, um, she was still there, but a police van was there. So I don't know what was going on, but <laughs> it was a bit concerning. Like she was just lying in the road. I don't think she'd been hit by a car or anything because she didn't need any medical attention. Um, and I didn't want to you know, intrude. So <laughs> I just rode on. Um, anyway, so I think in a second, we are coming up to um, a right hand turn. I don't think this is where the hill comes in. Let me just... Okay, so after the woman on the floor, um, <laughs> you turn right and this whole straight, you can see where the green dot is, is all pretty fast descent. Um, you will have seen when I've been putting it through two times speed. Road surface is fine, but this is going to be, I think, a very key section of the course. Because as you're zooming down here at, what am I doing, 55, 56 kilometres an hour, and I'm sure we'll be going quicker in the race. There's this tight bridge here, and then... You go round to the left, round to the right, and then you have a tight right-hander, and that's when you start climbing. So, well, it's not a right-hander, but it just kind of gently goes to the right. But that bridge is going to be a key section because people hate bridges and people will slam on their brakes. Even though the road doesn't really narrow, people will be slamming on. So you want to be near the front there so that when you start climbing... Oh my God, I was dying here because I've been doing efforts up until this point, um, as you'd have seen the threshold efforts. And um, I just wanted to spin around at a nice endurance pace. You can't spin up this hill. It is steep. Um, I'm really annoyed that gradient isn't working, by the way, because that is definitely like 15, 16%. And it's a long hill as well. And I'm going to let it play. Um, 
So that first bit's probably the steepest bit. It then levels off a bit, um, and yeah, it's not 31%. <laughs> You'll be grateful to know we're not doing um, some kind of climb from the vaulter. Um, so you keep climbing, keep climbing, keep climbing. Um, I'm rocking and rolling. <laughs> um, but this is the big climb. So this, this is the climb that is the QOM. And there's a QM every lap apart from the last lap, which is crazy. That means that we're going to be sprinting for this hill every single time. So let me just fast forward a bit to where it gets to near the top. So at this point, you're quite close to the top. Um, and that sign, I think, will be quite nice, that 150-yard sign, um, because you know you're getting near the top, um, because the junction is where you then turn off the hill. So as far as I can gather from the road book, the QOM point is going to be just before the junction, so maybe around about here. Um, and then you turn right, and then you have a nice descent. So let me show you that. So this final bit of the course um, that you would have seen is all rolling, it's all descent, it's all going to be fine um, when you're in a group, as far as I could tell. Um, now, just coming under the railway bridge, um, and you're going to see in a second where we turn off to do another lap. But what I've done is I've gone on ahead and I've gone to what I think will be the, um, the finish, from what I could gather from the... Um, from the road book so it's very fast down here nice fast descent and this is the corner that i think is gonna be a bit dodgy turning onto the other circuit which i said at the beginning just there off to the right um it's a bit gravelly that corner so probably want to be near the front be a bit more careful um, be behind someone who likes to corner so i was a bit shocked by this finishing bit because it's quite a key section um it's very steep and uphill um as in, like, I had to, obviously I wasn't going fast, but I had to drop into my little ring. Um, it wasn't something that you could just power up. You probably could in a race, but just to give you an idea of the steepness of it. Um, so you can see here we're climbing up towards the junction. It's not very long, though, so it should be okay. But And the thing is, at this point, it's going to be climb, climbery people left anyway. Um, so I thought I'd have a quick chat about who I think will be contenders. And I'm a bit worried to talk about this, you know, because it's a bit weird. It's a bit weird to say, like, oh, I think this person will do really well. Um, now, Cold Dark North run a race series is round here, like Lancaster, Oakenclough, um, places like that. And um, Mary Wilkinson always wins them. She's such a good climber. Um, oh, God, look, you see, I'm really struggling here. Um and I think she'll be a contender in this race um, because it is definitely one for the pure climbers. Sammy Stewart came second in that race around Oakenclough. Um, Oakenclough? Oakenclough? Um, so when you get to this junction, by the way, um, it starts to flatten off a bit. So that bit up to the junction is really steep and then you turn right and it it's still up a bit, but it's less, less steep. Um, so yeah, Mary Wilkinson, Sammy Stewart, obviously super strong, great contender, as are most of the women from Cairns Vasso. It'll be interesting to see who they kind of put their cars behind or whether they just kind of take a multi-leader approach. Um, or whether if one of them attacks or whatever. But like, so I was riding with Jess Finney the other day and she was so strong, she just literally rode me off her wheel, so mad. So this is the turning into the park, so this is the finish. Obviously, I'm not going for whack because I assume this gate will be open in the real thing as well. And I think this must be where it goes. Um, and obviously, there won't be people around. So this is the finish. You can see it's pretty tight, pretty technical. I think you probably want to get into the park in the first, like, four or five riders because it's going to be difficult to move up. Look at these benches on the left. I mean, I'm not sure it is going along this 
route from the map. It kind of looked like it was. Um, but yeah. Also in terms of contenders, my teammate Connie, um, she's an insane climber. So if any uh, courses suits her, it's this one. So this is a really cool finish. I think because this is why I think I'm right about this being the finish. Because there's a picture of the monument on the thing. But I stop here. But I think the finish is a bit further up that road straight ahead. So it's a flat finish, but you've got that kick before it. So it'll be interesting to see if someone breaks away there. And this is me done. So I hope you enjoyed this little breakdown. Um, I've enjoyed making it. Let's let me know if it's something that you enjoy. So if it's something you want to see more of. Um, I'm going to cut in a bit of video now of what I thought my initial thoughts were after the course. Um, but yeah, let me know if this is something you'd like to see a bit more of or if you think this is rubbish. <laughs> Actually, don't let me know. If you think it's rubbish, just keep it to yourself. I don't want to know. <laughs> All right, well, let's hope the race goes well on Sunday uh, and I will see you in the next one. So I've just got back to the car. Initial thoughts of the course. Because I, I think I'm right to say it's the first time there's a Women's Lancaster Grand Prix. I think it might take the spot of Rydell of hardest course because it's very similar to Rydell in that there's two climbs on the circuit but with Rydell you only do it four times and then you do the little circuit whereas this is six times it'd be 12 climbs and the climbs I think are a bit longer I mean it's difficult to tell at um like not race pace but it's gonna be a great race I'm so excited oh it's gonna be so hard Anyway, I'm sure I've talked enough in the uh, overlay. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, give it a like, give it a subscribe and comment down below if you, if you find these videos helpful, if you think I should do some more race previews because it's good fun to do. So yeah, anyway, I'll see you next time. Bye.